What if I were to tell you that because of the emulators used in Super Mario 3D All-Stars, it appears that there are some reasons, some very specific reasons, that we could be getting more GameCube and Wii games on Nintendo Switch. Now, before I get into that, I need to remind you, we are giving away three copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. We're also giving away a Switch Lite and two Switch games of choice. That's right, six total winners, all announced on October 1st, so there is still time to enter. Head down into the description to find out how to enter those giveaways. And you know what? I wish all of you guys luck. And hey, reminder, we have another giveaway happening starting October 1st for a PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, or or a Nintendo Switch. Uh, that'll be a two-month-long giveaway as a 50000 special. We'll also be starting a new giveaway for two copies of Pikmin 3 Deluxe at that time. But again, we'll talk about that on October 1st. All right. So this actually came out a couple days ago. And for those who don't know, during weekends, I get kind of behind on things a little bit just because I, well, <laughs> let's just be honest, I, I have kids and I have a life and I'm just not going to be able to spend as much time making content on weekends as I can during the week. But uh, I feel like it's still important enough to talk about because we have Zelda's 35th anniversary coming up and we also have the potential of Nintendo maybe considering doing more stuff like this, uh, like 3D All-Stars, now that they are running out of Wii U games to port over. Now, I really still hope they port over Nintendo Land and figure a way to make that work because I think Nintendo Land is a very underrated game, but that's neither here nor there. So this comes from at Oatmeal Dome on Twitter. He is a hacker. Um, he is someone who data mines, and uh, we've covered some of his stuff several times on this channel over the years. Uh, but he put out a tweet uh, where he was digging through the emulators. And he said, interestingly, Nintendo's GameCube slash Wii emulator in Super Mario 3D All-Stars appears to implement more GameCube and Wii U GPU features than they actually need. For example, Bounding Box is mainly used by Paper Mario games. Z Freeze is used in Mario Strikers, EA Sports games, and more. Now, he does note that he's not saying that these games are coming. He's not saying, like, oh, Paper Mario, Mario Strikers, and EA Sports games, they're all, they're all going to come, they're all going to come over to, uh, to Switch. Like, he's not, he's just, he's just pointing out examples that these features are used in. So, there's obviously oodles. He could have grabbed any, anything from 100 plus different examples of what these features are used in. They just are not used. They are not used in Galaxy, and they are not used in sunshine so these features don't really need to be there but they do exist now he does seem you know he does note that nintendo likely implemented a generic gamecube and wii emulator that can run any game now when you say generic are we talking you know an older emulator they made uh which some of the code's not lining up with the older virtual console stuff so i don't know that that's the case uh maybe they grabbed dolphin and they just modified it for their purposes that's entirely possible as well, although I doubt that they would use something that is so, I don't want to say commercialized, but so popularized. Uh, I mean, Dolphin is free, and I'm sure that those people that made it wouldn't have any problem with Nintendo using it, but yeah, they might want some royalties. I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, it says that it can run in any game and then made specific builds at Target, Galaxy, and Sunshine for Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Perhaps it's a sign of more to come. That's not guaranteed. We'll just have to see, but obviously there is hope at least. And I think one thing that I think is obvious about these is that they're going to reuse them on Switch. But what are they going to reuse them for? So one thing we have coming up is the 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. We also technically have the 35th anniversary of Metroid. And there's been a lot of talks about uh, what games could be part of a possible collection or brought over. Now, when we talk about things like uh, Twilight Princess and The Wind Waker, you know, GameCube titles, Wii titles. Uh, the thing is, those games have already been redone in HD and Wii U, so they could actually just port over the Wii U games much easier and have them play directly on Switch. So those games are kind of a non-factor unless you want to also bring back the originals, which I doubt Nintendo would want to bring back the originals when they have these, you know, quote-unquote superior versions out there that they could bring over. So I think those games are a mute argument. But there's still another Zelda game from that era that could make sense to bring over. And we're talking, of course, about Skyward Sword. Now, there's been all these rumors about Skyward Sword HD existing. And, yeah, Skyward Sword in HD, as we've seen in emulators, looks really, really, really good. There's, you know, a, a reason to want it in HD. That art style, by the way, that Skyward Sword uses, that painterly art style, was specifically chosen because the game's not in HD. So what it does is it makes the backdrops look beautiful um, while taking the focus away from the fact that they're really blurry. And turns out in HD, the backdrops look even more gorgeous. So 
Who would have thunk? Higher resolution makes that stuff look even better. So, yeah, uh, that's obviously one game for a Zelda collection or a port that could exist uh, that would take advantage of these emulators. I mean, clearly, why would you make these emulators and not use them and bring Skyward Sword HD over? If they could pull this off in six months you know, or less with Galaxy, they could easily do that with Skyward Sword with a small team. That's That, that shouldn't be a problem. I, I very... I very much think we're going to get Skyward Sword on this system next next year. Uh, but there's also Metroid. Now, there is a Metroid Prime trilogy that's been rumored to exist for years now. Uh, and the, the running theory, I guess, is that because Metroid Prime 4 has been delayed and changed developers and delayed some more, that uh, that's why the trilogy hasn't come out. Because they don't want the trilogy to come out too far away from the release of Metroid Prime 4. They kind of want people to be reminded of the Metroid Prime trilogy heading into the release of Metroid Prime 4. So, you know, releasing it like last year, it could be old news by the time 4 comes out, and I, I think they want to keep that together. Well, next year isn't just Zelda's anniversary. It's also the anniversary for Metroid, the 35th anniversary of Metroid. That's right. Both IPs were founded in the same year. So what could happen? and should happen in my opinion is the metro prime trilogy should come out next year in hd now you might be like okay well this has existed for a while it has potentially we don't actually know it's just been a rumor we don't actually know how long it's existed for but what i do know is the metro prime trilogy exists on wii they already ported the gamecube ones they, they made it all available on wii in a single package for a limited time collector's release they've already done this and adapted the controls for motion but obviously the traditional is still an option so what I'm putting out here is they could take that collection off a of Wii with the Wii emulator, HD it in the way they did with Galaxy, and bring that over for Metroid's 35th anniversary. And bada bing, bada boom, you're bringing back a collection pack you did once for a limited time release again as a hype cycle for Metroid Prime 4. I also feel like because of the 35th anniversary of Metroid, we will finally see a trailer for Metroid Prime 4 next year. Uh, I don't know when. I don't know if it'll drop on the anniversary. I don't know what, but I feel like we're going to see a trailer for it. But it's not coming next year. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe I'm just way off base and we are going to get Metroid Prime 4 next year. But I, I have severe doubts. I think 2022 is probably the target year, in my opinion. But I do think Metroid Prime Trilogy next year with the Wii emulator uh, is possible. Now you might go, well, what, what else could they do? They could do anything. If you look at the entire Wii and, 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 and you know, GameCube library, there's a lot of things that they could pull out of there. Um, one thing that might make sense is what if the sales of Pikmin 3 Deluxe next month go extremely well? What if that game en ends up being an 8 plus million seller? I don't know that Pikmin 3 Deluxe can do those kind of numbers, but I also didn't know that a lot of the games this generation could do the kind of numbers they're doing because they're doing record numbers. So what if Pikmin 3 Deluxe does that? Is it possible Nintendo considers HD ports of Pikmin 1 and 2? I mean, they have the emulators there to do it. Why not release a Pikmin collection? Heck, at that point, by the time they release it, the Pikmin collection could include three. Like, maybe they wait a couple years, and boom, here's your Pikmin collection with one and two in HD plus Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Wouldn't that be something, huh? Think about the endless possibilities with a Wii and GameCube emulator that can bring games into HD. Just think about the possibilities Nintendo could do here. Now, obviously, a lot of us prefer full-on remasters. You know, we prefer full-on redone games. I get that. But you know what? If you're not going to do that, hey, a lot of Wii and GameCube games from Nintendo would look pristine just bringing them in HD, just like Mario Galaxy does. Mario Galaxy looks almost like a modern game when it's in HD. If you can, the controls get a little clunky in today's world, but you get my point. Like it looks almost like a modern game, a modern Mario game. A lot of Nintendo's art style choices over the years translate very well to just being HD and looking good. Skyward Sword is going to look like a current game. It's, it's going to be amazing. So uh, I honestly think that this is the direction Nintendo should continue to explore. I don't know that any of this is coming. I just know that the capabilities inside the Wii and GameCube emulator that Nintendo created for Super Mario 3D All-Stars exist to do it. And I don't know that they would have these extra features in there uh, if they did make this from the ground up or, or you know, whatever. I don't know that they would have these features in there if they weren't planning on using them in other games. In fact, the team that ported these games over, 3D All-Stars, I have heard is not the main Mario team. It's actually not a main team from anyone at Nintendo. It's actually a very small team, uh, and that team could literally just be tasked with making these ports over and over and over again in different games. So uh, 
It's going to be crazy to see what else Nintendo plans to do. And the thing is, are you excited about this? Do you want all these old games to come back? Obviously, we don't want old games in lieu of new games. You know, Pikmin 3 Deluxe is not a replacement for Pikmin 4. But I do think uh, that having these old games come back to a, a new audience, uh, clearly with the sales of 3D All-Stars, is showing that there is a massive crowd for these games. Uh, and, well, you know, we always wanted them to come to the virtual console. This is better than nothing, isn't it? I, I don't know. That's just my opinion anyways. Um, so, yeah, a, a day that I could buy all the Zelda games, hopefully next year maybe even. I mean, we, we always talk about the 3D games. What about a, a 2D collection pack or a top-down collection pack? You know, there's a lot of possibilities with Zelda. It would be great to be able to play and or buy every single Zelda game on Switch next year that's ever come out. And that would be nice, but we'll see what happens. All right, folks, that's all I got for you for this video, our first of many today. Uh, be sure to, to, to tune in later. We will have a Prime News episode coming later today, um, hopefully up around 5, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. You guys know the drill with that one. Uh, Prime News is, uh, is, is a, a really nice content type that I hope you guys learn to love. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.